Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today I'm going to be having a proper fondle with the ZTE Axon 20 5G. It's the first smartphone to be launched globally with an under display selfie camera. So kiss goodbye to your nipple notches and your pinhole selfie cam sphincter jobbies. You'll get a glorious full view experience for your Netflix and all of that with none of that nonsense. So what I'm going to do now is whip the ZTE Axon 20 5G on out of its box and take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so we've got one phone, which is jammed in there pretty tight. I'm really hoping there's a nice bit of, yes, indeed, condom case action. Wrap it up nice and tight. Make sure you don't get any baby accents running about the place. Or actually just make sure it doesn't get scratched up or anything. You've got one porky pin jobby, one adapter, in this case a two pin European effort, one not particularly sexy type C USB cable. And last up, yes, there is a type C USB to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter because dang it, there's no headphone jack on the ZTE Axon 20. But hey ho, at least they actually bundle an adapter in the box. Right, so let's check out the actual phone now. So here it is in all of its luster. Our first squint at the ZTE Axon 20 5G and initial impressions are definitely, ooh. The phone certainly has a decent heft to it and uh, definitely smacks of premium quality as well from obviously that quite glitzy back end to little details such as the textured pattern on those buttons. Or well, more specifically that button because it's just on the power button I guess to help differentiate it from the volume up and volume down which is just as well because they're all quite close together there. And of course one of the first things you notice is the complete lack of any pinhole cutout or notch up top there on the display uh, and it's not until you actually start to tilt the phone away from you that you can actually make out that selfie cam just at the top end there. But of course we'll explore that more when we actually get the phone all set up and test out the features. And then as for the other end, the RSN, it's made of glass, 3D curved glass to be precise. And this is the black model, although you can pick it up in the more vibrant blue, purple or orange hues. And definitely enjoying the curved pattern as the light strikes that back end. Definitely very snazzy indeed, although I do kind of wish this was one of the more vivid uh, models, one of the brighter colours. And at least the branding is fairly subtle as well. It's nothing approaching Poco levels if you've seen my M3 or X3 reviews. However, the Axon 20 is already starting to pick up greasy smudges. I don't know how obvious that will very obvious on camera when I did tilt it like that, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, if you uh, like to eat chips and text at the same time, uh, you might want to keep a cleaning cloth handy. And it's quite a chunky uh, camera chassis there as well. It's a quad lens camera, which again, I'll investigate in depth in a bit. Anyhow, it feels like the ZT Axon 25G has plenty of gas in the tank. So let's get it all set up and then take you on a full on tour of the rest of it. Oh, and when you are set setting up your ZT Axon 25G and you've got to slip your SIM card inside, you'll note that there's space for two SIM cards, otherwise a single SIM and a micro SD memory card. Okay, so the ZT Axon 25G is all set up and ready for action. And unfortunately, it's not the latest version of Android that is stuck away on here. It's Android 10, so it is a bit behind the times. What you do get on top, though, is the Mi Favorite UI launcher version 10.5. And thankfully, this doesn't go too crazy when it comes to changing up the stock version of Android and uh, adding a whole bunch of extra features on here. You do get a few little differences, such as, for instance, the infinite loop uh, is enabled by default. However, if you dive on into the home screen settings, you can actually bring back that Google Discover feed. Uh, so that'll just get rid of the infinite loop. And as you can see, then you've got your uh, Google News and everything right there where you want it. And there are some genuinely useful features squirreled away in here as well. You've got that always on display because it is an OLED panel. Uh, you can customize the schedule for that and you can actually play around with a few different styles and everything as well. You've got all the other usual Android shenanigans like you can pull down that notification bar from anywhere on screen, which is good because it's a 6.92 inch beast, the ZTE Axon 20. So as you can imagine, one-handed use ain't exactly particularly easy. You've got all the usual uh, gesture navigation and everything. You've actually got some bonus uh, gesture support in here as well, such as the ability to turn on the flashlight by shaking the ZTE Axon 20, although I can never get that bloody thing to work. Seriously, I've tried shaking it. Oh my god, there we go. <laughs> wow, first time I catch it on camera, I actually managed to do it because I've been shaking this more for non stop and I just could not get it to work. And I guarantee you now that'll be the only time I actually do manage to get it to work. For your security, you've got an in-display uh, fingerprint sensor, just like you've got an in-display selfie camera, and it seems to be pretty reliable so far. Just a quick tap of your digit, and uh, you're straight in. Of course, I'm not a massive fan of in-display. I do prefer the old edge-mounted or around the back, but it seems to do the job. And that's also backed up with a handy bit of face recognition as well, just in case your fingers are a bit grubby or something. And again, that seems to be super, super nippy. Boom, straight into the desktops. And of course, the most interesting thing about that 6.92-inch OLED display is definitely the under 
display selfie cam, you can actually just notice there is a slight change in the coloration where the cam is. But to be honest, on the whole, it is masked really, really well. As you can see, I've gone full screen here in YouTube, and you can't actually really make out that cam unless you look at it from an angle or peer really, really hard at the thing. And of course, you get that glorious full view experience with other smartphones like uh, Sony's Xperia's, which uh, have a big sort of fat, chunky bezel up top with the selfie cam in, and the likes of the Zenfone 7 and the OnePlus 7T Pro, where you have a pop or a flip up camera, which just stand to attention uh, when they're needed, so to speak. But to be honest, I'm really, really impressed by how well this camera is integrated into that display. And if, you know, you gave this phone to someone and didn't tell them about that camera, I doubt they would even really notice, to be honest. It's very, very cool stuff. And the technology itself sounds pretty clever. The display itself is made from high transparency material, so as much light as possible can permeate through, while ZT has integrated a special dual control chip to ensure that that front camera gets a perfect view through the display only when needed. As for the quality of the visuals themselves, no complaints there. You've got a full HD plus resolution, so it's not a quad HD monster, but you know what? Images still look nice and crisp and detailed. It's a 20.5 by 9 stretched aspect ratio, so almost that cinema wide uh, effect that you get from the light to the Xperia's, you got 10-bit HDR support on there and colours look nice and natural. And yeah, like pretty much every other smartphone out there right now, apart from of course those crazy expensive iPhones, you do have a 90Hz refresh rate option as well, although the ZTE Axon 20 is set to 60 by default. Unfortunately, my review unit of the ZTE Axon 25G won't let me download and install Netflix or Disney Plus from the Google Play Store, and when I try installing Netflix via an APK, it's having none of that as well. That's probably down to the bootloader, it's probably been unlocked to my review unit uh, without me knowing. That's usually what the issue is on Chinese smartphones when I receive them and they can't play the likes of Disney Plus and Netflix. But I'll dig around into that a little bit more and let you know. On the audio side of things, there's no stereo speaker setup unfortunately here on the ZTE Axon 20. It is just a single mono speaker housed down below and as I mentioned before, there's no headphone jack either. But let's see how that speaker holds up. Let's just bung up the volume. It's how you would probably meet Sally in a BDSM club with her squatting over his chest, unleashing hot fury before bunging a cactus up his so the clarity there is actually pretty decent, uh, no complaints on uh, the audio on top volume, seems to have a, a decent little punch, it's just as I say a shame that you don't get that stereo setup. And if you dive on into the audio settings you've got some pretty impressive uh, support here as well, you've got full hi-fi support once you've got some uh, compatible headphones, connected ditto for DTS, you've actually got DTSX Ultra on the go. So you get a nice surround sound effect, particularly handy for any compatible movies or games, and you can also set up your own personal audio preferences and a listening profile too. And let's have a shift here the performance and what you got packed inside of the ZTE Axon 20 is the Snapdragon 765G, very popular chipset in 2020, backed by the 6 or 8 gigs of RAM depending on which model you grab. So as you can expect, quite dependable performance no matter what you're up to. My review models pack in 8 gigs of RAM and as you can see they're perfectly respectable benchmarking scores and you should be able to do gaming with the likes of Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, all that good stuff, no problem even on higher detail levels. And that situation has definitely helped along by the fact you've got a liquid cooling system inside the ZTE Axon 20 with nine separate internal temperature sensors just to monitor the internals, make sure nothing's getting too toasty. But to be honest, I found that even if I was gaming for a solid hour or two uh, on the likes of Call of Duty on previous 765G smartphones, no worries at all, they don't get too hot. And of course, as the name of the phone kind of suggests, you've got that full 5G support built into the 765G as well, so you are future-proofed. As for the battery, well, it's not quite as big as some rivals. It's a 4,220 milliamp cell stuffed inside the ZTX and 20. Hopefully, it should still keep you going all day long uh, uh, no worries, but we'll be testing that out for my full in-depth review. And as you can see, you've got the likes of the adaptive 5G feature, which will swap to 5G, uh, depending on what you're actually doing at the time, uh, and lots of other battery optimization options as well. And when it comes time to power up the ZTX and 25G, again, you've got 30 watt fast charging, which is pretty damn good. Not the absolute best around, obviously, the likes of the OnePluses and the Oppos. They can do 65 watt fast charge and get the job done much quicker, but still, you'll probably get pretty much a full charge in about an hour at the plug. So now finally let's turn our attention to the camera tech and on the back here you've got a quad lens setup as I mentioned earlier and as is quite clearly stated there the primary lens is a 64 megapixel sensor. But of course like most smartphones these days the ZT X20 doesn't actually shoot 64 megapixel pictures by default it'll shoot 16 megapixel using four in one pixel binning just to help brighten up shots uh, when the light's not quite ideal but you can shoot at that full 64 megapixel resolution if you want by diving into that setting. All well, the usual settings you'd expect like like good old HDR uh, auto mode and everything are on board here as well. You can do live photos, uh, you've got usual beauty modes, 
and of course filters as well if you want them. And of course you can quickly and easily swap to that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens when you want to capture a bit more of the scenery. You've got the usual bonus photo modes like a portrait mode using a 2 megapixel depth sensor, that's the third camera lens slapped on the back of the ZT Axon 20. And as you can see there you've got a variety of different uh, sort of filter effects that you can use. It's a bit of rainbow monkey uh, with a funky monochrome background, very snazzy. And you also have a night mode for when things get proper dark and that'll just capture lots of different photos at different exposure levels, splice them all together and hopefully give you a nice balanced bright result. You can certainly get a lot more uh, background detail on the go there with this night mode, although it does seem to have gone a little bit uh, crazy with the orange thanks to, thanks to my uh, smart light. If we jump into the video mode you can shoot uh, whole movies up to 4K resolution footage even at 60 frames per second here on the ZT Axon 20. You can even have a bit of a play around with the white balance as well depending on the conditions and speaking of which you do have a full uh, manual mode for your photos as well if you want it. But of course the bit that we're all interested in is that 32 megapixel hidden selfie cam to see if it can actually uh, produce selfies of a reasonable standard. And certainly on the screen itself everything looks sort of natural and quite detailed. Let's actually punch into one of the photos. No, oh yeah, instantly uh, definitely an Instagram worthy shot right there. But certainly for something that's hidden away behind all of that glass it seems like that 32 meg selfie cam will be well up for the job. And you've even got a bit of portrait mode action as well, so let's give that a go. You know, I really, really have to stop shooting these selfies as I'm talking, that's never a good idea. So that right there in a nutshell is the ZT Axon 20 5G, the first globally available smartphone with an in-display camera. I keep, I keep wanting to say in-display fingerprint sensors because I'm so used to seeing that. And I've got to say, I'm certainly impressed by that uh, camera screen technology. Seems really well integrated in there. Only really obvious when you view it from an angle or if you're staring really, really hard. Otherwise, you wouldn't even notice. So it's a nice, neat solution and uh, the rest of the specs solid as well. 765G, of course, will keep you ticking over quite nicely all day long. Hopefully all day battery life and hopefully that camera tech will hold up as well. Stay tuned for an in-depth review for more on all that jazz. So please let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll be very interested indeed to hear your thoughts on the ZT Axon 25G. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.